Hey you guys, so I am getting ready over here to make some cheese. I'm just making like a really simple farm cheese using the heat acid method. I'm not adding cultures in, I'm not doing anything fancy today. This is just a super quick, simple, easy cheese to make at home. Like it's a great way to get your foot in the door with cheese making. I will be doing a video later on. I've got two that I'm working on that are a cured soft cheese with a rind. So those will be coming up here in a month or two. And then as time goes on, I'm working on other things like a cheddar and some other stuff like that. But those take like nine months to age. So you'll have to wait a while for that. Um, Cause I don't want to post a how to video if I don't know that it turned out perfect. Well, or delicious. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It just has to taste damn good. Um, cheese is one of my favorite things. So I'm super excited about this. So uh, I have over here, a half gallon of goat's milk. I have no idea where these jugs came from. They came with the house. So I'm super happy to have them. And I'm going to be putting it into my big stock pot. And it's going to go on the stove. I'll show you this whole process in a second. I'm just explaining what I'm doing before I do it. It's going to go on my wood stove here on the lowest temperature setting. And I'm going to bring it up to around 180 degrees. And when I hit that 180 degree point, I'm going to be adding an acid. I'm using lemon juice today. Some people use lemon juice. Some people use the vinegar. Some people use a combination of the two. Lemon juice is what I have. That's what I'm using. And then I will show you this whole process. So I'm going to change the camera around and show you me pouring my lovely goat's milk, which I only have one goat in milk. Actually, I'm only milking her because her baby is only nursing off of one side and I cannot get the baby to nurse off of the other side no matter what I do. So I've been milking that side out. It's taken me about four days to collect my half gallon of milk, uh, but it's super exciting because I get to do this for you guys. So I'm really happy with that. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and then show you guys the start of this cheese making process. Oh, let me zoom it out. So here is my lovely half gallon of milk. I'm going to add it to my pot. A half gallon is two quarts, in case you guys didn't know that. So I'm just, just a hair under, but that's okay. See, my I love this pot because it has the quarts here and the liters here. So I'm going to grab this and oh, use this hand too. Take it over to my stove. I'm putting it on... So my fire is here. That's the hottest section of my stove. Medium heat, low heat. So it's on the low heat, which is roughly that many degrees is. Somewhere between 190 and 210. So it's gonna sit here. I'm gonna stir constantly to make sure that it does not get scorched on the bottom and it should take I would say 30 minutes to get to the right temperature if you're going too fast slow it down because it can mess up your curds at the end um so yeah if it's getting too hot too quickly slow your temperature down I'm going to be grabbing a thermometer to pop in here later um I don't have a digital one right now I just have an old school candy thermometer that I'm going to be using today but eventually I will have a digital thermometer for this. So I'm going to come back when we are at that 180 degree mark and show you guys the next step. Hey, so we are not at the 180 degrees, but I did wanna come back here and say that I had thoroughly sanitized all of my utensils and stuff before starting this process, just to make sure that no weird bacteria hops in there and likes to try and make a thing with cheese. Um, this is more important for aged cheeses than it is with like this farm cheese because you eat this one like right away and it doesn't have to wait for a while. But when you're doing an aged cheese, you want to really make sure that everything is nice and sanitized so that you don't get like some weird kind of gross going on in your cheese. Also, I have my glass of eggnog with rum in it. I got this spiced rum, Kraken, Kraken spiced rum. Holy crap, it's so good. I love it. Uh, I'm really happy with it. <laughs> If you don't know me, if you somehow magically found me and you're not from my group, you will know that whiskey is my usual drink, mostly because of my human, but I'm pretty happy with rum for the holidays. The spiced rum in my eggnog is great. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to stirring my milk until it gets up to temperature, cause we so low. 
So yeah, once it hits that 180, I will be back. All right, we have reached 180 degrees. I'm going to add in my lemon juice and then stir it some and then let it sit for 30 minutes for it to turn into cheese curds. And then I will be back to show you. I should start separating immediately. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes, go eat some food, and I will be back to show you the next step. Okay, as you can see here, let's zoom in. This has separated into the curds in the way. So I have a colander with the cheesecloth in it. I'm just going to pour this into here and let the whey drain out for 10 to 15 minutes. Alright, it is draining in here now. And I will be back to show you the next step. All right, my whey has drained. And I'm left to see it's a little dry, crumbly. It's not too dry, it's still pretty moist. Um, and then here is my bowl of whey, which will be going to hang out with the chickens. I lost a little more butter fat than I wanted to, but that's okay. So now I'm going to salt my curds. And I just do this to taste. Um, so I'm just, I have sea salt from the Costco and I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle, mix it up. My hands are nice and clean. I just washed them. Yeah, and if you want, like this is pretty good and creamy here for me. If you want a creamier texture in your cheese, you can add a tiny bit of the whey back in during this mixing process and it'll add creamier, a creamier texture. A little more. The other thing you can do too, because there is the acid, the lemon juice in here, if you want a less tangy cheese, you can rinse it really quick with a little bit of water, but I like the tang, so. Okay. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Tiny bit more salt. Ooh, that's good. This is a really mild flavor cheese, like milk from this goat, which I really like. Some goat cheeses can be really strong and goaty. Um, this one's not bad. I believe this goat is an overhaul C, however you say it. I probably said it wrong. Sorry, you guys. That's what happens when you learn a lot from online, and those are not the goats that I have. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Mm, a little bit more. So at this point too, if you wanted to add herbs or whatever else, you could go ahead and add that. If you wanted to add like a little drizzle of honey, like honey and cinnamon goat cheese is so good. Um, what I'm going to be doing is once this forms, I'm gonna be splitting it in half and adding a cranberry compote on top of one half and then the other half is going to be just plain goat cheese. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let me move my tools out of the way here. So you can see, I'm going to use two bowls to form this. So this bowl here, I'm going to pick up my goat cheese in its cheesecloth. And I want to, I'm not trying to squeeze out a ton more whey. I have a good bit left. Let me go. Squeeze a tiny bit. Not much, just a little more. Okay. There. I like that texture. So what I'm going to do now, as I'm wrapping this, laying it down in here, trying to get it as smooth as possible. Here we go. So this is just going to form like a disc, which is what I like. I have that. I'm going to pop 
this on top. Actually, I might do this the other way around. Let's see if this one will nest in here. Nope, it will not put pressure. Okay, keep it with my original method. This will go on here. And it's going to, I'm slowly going to add in probably some dry beans or something just to give it a little bit of weight. And I don't think y'all could have seen that very well. So I have my cheesecloth in there, or my uh, curds in there and my cheesecloth. Pressing that down. And I'm going to add in some dry beans on top, maybe, maybe two to three pounds of dried beans. And I'm going to let this press for... 30, 40 minutes, and then I will stick it in the refrigerator and, well, I'll unmold it and stick it in the refrigerator and let it set up overnight in there. All right, so I just ran outside and finished up feeding all the animals out there, and I took the weight off of this. So we're going to, oh, I think it could have used more weight. It's okay. It's okay. Didn't put quite enough beans. Going, it, yeah, it's falling apart. Dang it. So the more weight you put on it, maybe I'll put it back in there and put more weight on for a longer time. The um, more it kind of knits together. Maybe I'll try it in here as like its actual form. Yeah, see how it's all crumbly? That's not what I want. It needed more weight and I didn't do enough. Maybe we'll make a ball, you guys. This is the fun part of cheese making. Also, I've never made cheese with this goat's milk, so it could also be something to do with her milk. Okay, there we go. I don't know what you guys can see, let's see. So I have decided to pack it in here, Then we're going to Cover it up, cover it up like that. Do you fit? Of course not. Well, that will fit in here. I think I might have a small plate. So really, I'm just looking for something that's going to set on there that I can put weight on top of to form. Nope, that's not gonna work. That's too small. There, there are cheese molds for these kinds of things. I just don't have them right now. <sighs> All right, we'll go back to my small bowl, maybe. Yeah, I think that's gonna be my best bet. All right, this time I'm going to add maybe 10 pounds of weight to it and then come back. So. I'm going to go add 10 pounds of beans or something. I think I have sand or something heavier. Oh, I have weights. I have weights in the shop. I'm just going to go grab a 10 pound weight and toss it in the bowl. And then I will come back after 30, 40 minutes of it with a 10 pound weight on. So for some reason, my phone did not record me taking this out of the uh, cheesecloth. But I wanted to show you the edges are still a little crumbly, but the middle where it had the weight. See how it's like, oh, here. See how it's kind of springy versus here I push in and it stays in here it's the same pressure and it kind of springs back and that's just because I didn't have anything to firmly press put pressure all around the edges so this is where most of the pressure went and you can see it started to knit together so yay this is going to go hang out in the fridge and we're going to have it on Christmas day and you guys will be seeing this video after that but yeah this is it I'll cut it in half half will get cranberry and honey the other half will just be plain, I'm making some sourdough bread. So yep, that is super simple, easy cheese. Like I said, I'm working on some using cultures and all of that, and it's <laughs> quick soft rip, and sorry, my dog is eating dinner and she like keeps looking up to see if I'm gonna give her some cheese or something. <laughs> Alright, well I will catch you all later. Bye.